My name is Megan Mitchell. When I'm not food styling, shopping, and prepping for various cooking shows, I love cooking for friends and creating new recipes. This is Secrets of a Food Stylist. Hi, I'm Megan Mitchell, and today we're making homemade sriracha. I'm gonna actually put it on savory waffles and drizzle it with honey and then some green onion. It's fun to make, and you sound super awesome when people say, wow, this sriracha tastes amazing, and you're like, well, I made it, homemade. I have a pound and a half of red jalapeno peppers, and I'm just de-seeding and taking the membrane out of half of them, and then the other half, I'm leaving the seeds in. And this way, I'll get a spicy sauce, but it won't be crazy spicy where you can't even eat it. I'm also adding this little gem, habanero, super spicy. I'm taking the stem, the seeds, and the membrane out of this one. I don't want to mess around. I'm just roughly chopping all of my peppers. It helps my blender along. I'm going to add six cloves of peeled garlic. You don't really need to chop this up. It'll blend pretty well. I'm gonna add a half a cup of water, and then a half a cup of just white distilled vinegar. Let's blend it up. Now it's getting going. I'm gonna bump it up, and I'm gonna leave it for about five minutes. This looks ready. The great thing about making a homemade sriracha is it really stays bright and vibrant and fresh, a little bit longer than the store-bought. You don't know how long it's been sitting on that shelf. You can see it's quite thick. Turn it on to simmer. I'm gonna add one fourth cup of my brown sugar. It adds kind of a deeper molasses flavor to this. Tablespoon of salt. You want it on a simmer, you don't want a, a rolling boil because this will boil over and you'll lose all your sauce and it'll be a mess. And there's a layer of foam on top and you just want to skim it off. It's just a little air, just trying to get out of the sriracha sauce. You want it to simmer and reduce by about a third. On to my savory waffles. So I have two cups of just AP flour in here. To that, I'm adding baking powder, a teaspoon and a half, and a teaspoon of baking soda. I like using both. It gives rise and body and helps, you know, these be light and fluffy. And one teaspoon of just granulated sugar, a teaspoon of black pepper, and two teaspoons of salt. I'm making them savory. Gotta add the salt. I'm also gonna add fresh herbs to this dish. And they add a great flavor, freshness, and they look beautiful. I'm using chives and thyme. You need a tablespoon of each. I'm just removing these little leaves from the stems. I love cooking with fresh herbs, but they can go bad so quickly and they can get gross and you don't wanna use them. We use a lot, obviously, on cooking shows and styling, and our secret way, wrap them in a damp paper towel, Ziploc bag, they last twice as long. I'm using thyme because it adds sort of a lemony freshness to the waffles, and I'm using chives because I like the subtle, almost garlicky onion taste that they give it. You just want to do a very fine mince on this. You don't want a big piece of chive when you bite into your waffles. Now I'm gonna cut my green onion, which won't go in my waffles, it'll actually go on top, but it adds a nice crunch. I'm just gonna reserve those for later. My sriracha has actually gotten brighter, really orange, really vibrant red and a little more foam. You don't have to babysit it, but you do have to come check on it. And every once in a while, give it a stir so it's not sticking to the bottom. It does have that sugar in it. And you just want to get all this foam off. Now to add all of my herbs into my waffles. Can I make it with all these? Beautiful. I want to make sure everything's evenly dispersed. My wet ingredients, which will then go into my dry to make my light and fluffy waffles. Very easy, two eggs, two cups of buttermilk, and a fourth a cup of melted butter. People think buttermilk's in the title, they think it's fatty, and it's actually less fat than using heavy cream or even you know whole milk. Melted butter. I mean, I couldn't leave butter out completely. I just wanna incorporate this so I don't overwork my batter, I just wanna break up the eggs. I'm adding my wet into my dry because this way I can slowly stream it in and work it into the batter. If I was doing it the other way, the flour would just kind of sit on top and leave pockets and I'd overwork my dough or my batter. That's not what we want. We want light, fluffy waffles. I'm pouring it in the middle, sort of working the flour from the outside into the middle. 
you just want to combine this. Make sure there's no pockets of flour, that the egg and everything has just combined. I'm gonna let this rest a little bit. This looks gorgeous. It's vibrant, it's red, it's thickened by about a third. And I'm gonna re-blend this because everything's softened now, the peppers are a little softer, it's gonna puree even more. I'm gonna pop this little thing off of my blender top because obviously we can see this is steaming. If I just put this on with that in it, it might explode everywhere because it's so hot. Put a towel over and then I can puree it and not worry about it exploding. This looks great. I'm gonna put it through a fine mesh sieve. I just have a bowl strainer. This will help push out all of the extra chunks. You want a really, really smooth sauce. Help it through. It's thick, doesn't really want to go on its own. And don't skip the step. I know we blend it twice and then I expect you to strain it, but this is important. You don't want to have a big seed in, in this beautiful dish that we're about to make. Push all of the, the beautiful silky sauce out and it's left just this thick kind of paste. Oh, look at that, it looks so gorgeous. I'm gonna let this cool and go make my waffles. I've preheated my waffle maker, so it's waiting for me. I'm gonna grease it. Don't want these to stick after you work so hard on them and not be able to get them out. My waffle iron takes about two cups of this batter. Just read your manufacturer directions and see how much it takes and how long it should cook. I'm putting it in the middle because when I press it down, it'll all go to the sides. My waffles are ready. Oh, look how pretty they look. Careful, crazy hot. Fingers of steel. Now obviously, I don't want one ginormous thing of four waffles. So I'm gonna cut these up, make them a little prettier. Oh my gosh, these smell amazing. You can really smell the chives. Time to plate. White plate, this with the colors. You don't need anything messing it up. Next, the honey. The sweetness of this honey will really balance and you know, complement the sriracha. Sriracha, it's time. Oh man, this looks so beautiful. It looks really appetizing when you see sauce just kind of slowly drip down the side of a waffle or whatever you put it on. If you like it spicy, load it up. If not, just a, a little drizzle. And last, my green onions. The pop of the green, it makes it look fresh and it tastes really good. Okay, dig in. Mmm. The honey is so sweet and it really balances the sriracha on the herby waffle. It all just goes so well together. For this recipe and more, subscribe to Hungry. I'm gonna eat some more. Don't judge.